Uh, I'm Pablo, I'm from Argentina. I work with the Red Cross team called the Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center. Most of what you're going to see is actually the result of the work that I've been doing with my partner, collaborator, and, and wife, Jano Mender de Suarez, who also uh, joined the Berlin event. This was the first slide I saw at that Berlin event. And uh, it spoke so much, because we need to step out. So thank you, AN, for that and for everything else that happened. Quick flavor. This is something that is in the website of my organization now. My team specializes in climate risk. We help others understand what may happen and what to do about it. This is going on now. It's El Nino. If you live in a place with a pixel that is yellowish or bluish, means that you are more likely to be in trouble than usual. When we started this event, there was the question, where are you from? And we got people from all the letters, America, uh, Brazil. Brazil is the seventh largest economy in the planet. We don't have anyone from Bolivia. We don't have anyone from Angola, Ethiopia, Cambodia, Fiji. This tribe has been doing a lot to be more inclusive and to reach out, but there's a lot of people out there who have no clue about all the skills that applied improvisation can offer. I am so happy, so grateful to you because we are taking some of what we're learning from you to go places. Now, when this forecast exists, we need to take action and it's hard to take action. We have developed an idea, forecast-based financing, an approach for catalyzing humanitarian action based on extreme weather and climate forecasts. We got a few million euros from the German government. And when I explain this, which includes equations to to explain at what point, how, how blue should your pixel be before you invest in flood preparedness? Yeah? So it depends on the cost, the potential losses, the probability, the extra cost of, it's a mess. And when I explain these people fall asleep. Now thanks to Applied Improv, I keep them somewhat awake. So let's have a little game inspired by the spirituality session where uh, we are one word at a time, you've all played a million times, in this session, it was, but the two of you are a child, and you're writing a letter to God. That really changed my understanding of that exercise. So now I'm going to give you a very simple task to see how improvisation can be with or against disaster preparedness. How can we take action before the disaster, after the forecast? It's not one word at a time. Uh, these are the simple th rules. The context, you and your partner, you will find one next to you are in coastal Mozambique on a holiday. A cabin as awesome as the one you have, also 100 meters from the water, but it's the coast. It's the beautiful beaches of Mozambique. Only one of you knows Portuguese, the official language. And you think you hear in the radio this thing. I will say it in case you cannot read. The radio just said that a category five cyclone is expected to hit this district in 24 hours. And person B, you figure out who's A, who's B, says yes, and we could seek shelter in the basement of this lovely cabin, which is strong, and if the wind is too strong, it doesn't blow away, right? So your task, find a partner. Who is A says this, then B says that, then say something A, something B, you have 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. And stop. 30 seconds are up. Thank you. 30 seconds are up. Thank you. Now, if 24 hours elapsed from the conversation you had, you took action based on your conversation. You took action. You are in some place. Are you outside of the basement? Are you somewhere else? If so, please stand up. OK. Some of you are elsewhere. Very well. You may sit down. Everybody else, you're in the basement, please stand up. Good. Now I'm going to say something that may sound familiar to you. You are, those of you who are standing, you are back in nature. Back in nature means that your body is no longer having you because you died. Okay? You drowned. Now, listen to you. You are freaking laughing. Dudes, what is wrong with this tribe? You just killed yourself. You yes ended a statement that may seem plausible. Let's seek shelter in the basement, but the wind will also bring storm surge 
four meters of water, you're underwater. So your yes anding can yes and a statement that needs to be told no, not even yes but, okay? So when I see how your behavior as a tribe leads to the deaths that I have a mandate to prevent, and see, I, I still, I can't explain the extent to which your tribal behavior is really itching me. I would love for more improv in the humanitarian sector, in disaster preparedness and so on, for the things that it's good at. But if you are going to keep laughing when someone is dying, no one will invite you. No one will ask you to come facilitate a session if you're, yes, and, and oh, you died, yes, and now I'm celebrating your funeral. No, dudes, no. Recalibrate your tribal behavior if you want to have an impact in that world that desperately needs you. We desperately need you. You have so much skill, so much talent that we don't have. We don't know how to operate in confusing situations. You know, but some of the things you take as dogma are not welcome and can be very dangerous. I don't know exactly how, but let's work together. I'm going to share with you some of, so this is uh, before my AIN. Jano and I were designing uh, games and playing them with subsistence farmers in Malawi, at the White House, all over the place to explain complexity, okay? A year ago, sorry, two years ago, exactly two years ago, Jano and I were in Karamoja, Uganda doing things with local government, playing games about disaster management. Then we went to Berlin, awesome AIN event. Thank you, so much to learn, so much to help people feel comfortable and connected in the face of the unknown. That's disaster preparedness. You don't know what's coming, you've never experienced, you better do something, don't go to the basement. <laughs> then I ended up going to a few more places. In Washington, we played an adapted version of Snap. If you know it, it's an awesome game. I, use, I have used it every time that I have five minutes or more since experiencing it. We collaborated with the MIT Game Lab. We, we made a digital version. People can play. This is Jano facilitating. A, Snap has now become a game that people see what they think collectively as a group and how they think differently. Uh, and now there's a journal article explaining how the World Bank training session on uh, how to use GIS and computer stuff to prepare for disasters benefited from Snap. And Snap was created by the president of the Applied Improv Network. It's there. Uh, don't clap because I won't get to the end. You can clap at the end. Uh, a bit more traveling, coming, going, etc. And then I was in Kazungula, Western Zambia, right there. In Kazungula, we had more training of people. Uh, it made it to the to the NASA publication, rocket launch, etc. Page 47, the Red Cross project in Kazungula, Zambia. This is Muno, a volunteer. Kazungula has a population 700. Okay, what are the chances of this fellow making it to a NASA publication? Because he learned how to play games that make him smarter to connect to the community, so we better use the satellite images that give us flood warnings. Um, then I kept going here, there. In Argentina, I was told, can you come play a game? I said, yes, I, did. I knew I didn't have time to prepare well. And then I learned it was with 2,500 people. <laughs> and if I didn't have applied improv skills, I would have freaked out or I have been incompetent. It was a very successful session. Thank you so much for helping me be uh, connected. Um, interestingly, at about that time, we officially put up in the website of my team in Spanish PowerPoint Karaoke, a game I learned in Berlin, where we give our recent trainees slides about climate change that they have to explain. And it's so useful for them to experience, oh my goodness, what was this slide about? And they have to figure out. Awesome skill. Uh, kept going here and there, uh, more travels, more this, more that. Lima, Peru, you may remember this. UN climate conference, 10,000 people with neckties, talking about the future of humanity, usually failing. Um, and we had an event on zero poverty, zero emissions within a generation. And we partnered up with phenomenal artist Thomas Saracen over there, had an idea, let's work with local community, collect thousands, tens of thousands of plastic bags that would end in the trash. Uh, Red Cross mobilized volunteers, high school students, collected them, it's a lot of plastic. 
And instead of going to the trash, you cut it, you tape it, you create a gigantic membrane that becomes a balloon that you inflate, and it keeps inflating. People can remove their shoes and climb inside. It's a cathedral of light. Uh, cameras come in. That's a Nobel Prize winning scientist. Never seen him smile that much. Awesome fellow. Uh, happy, happy to be in there, changing the perspective. This is kids, shanty town dwellers, made this thing. And that thing was supposed to fly because with sun and a black patch, no need for heat. Now, this is uh, the artist, Tomas, explaining how he did it during one of the sessions to that audience. Guess what? Even though it wasn't sunny, it absorbed enough sunlight to fly. Thank you, AIN, because what you did was to donate the GoPro camera that is available for this as it lifts to film the community that made it and film the place where it lives and identify the shelter places that are safe next time there's a flood. Uh, kept going, coming, going, etc. Accra, Ghana. Big problem with um, cholera. You don't wash your hands because you don't wash your hands because you don't have soap or you don't want to, you get very, very seriously sick. So we are working with partners. We have a game. In this game, it's a little improv game where you say, I wash my hands after eating, and I wash my hands after going to the bathroom, and I wash my hands after shaking hands. And if you run out of things to say, boom, you sit down and others keep playing. And people have to come up with, when do I need to? One minute to go. Uh, more publications, you heard Barbara. We need to establish in those spaces that apply the improv works. Otherwise, no one will open the door. Uh, kept traveling, kept going. In Nairobi, awesome. I have a 800 people in a, in a session. I was playing a game and power went out. Complete darkness. I was freaked out. I thought, okay, it's an offer. <laughs> it became an offer. And people didn't panic, and they, we kept learning, and thank goodness, after seven minutes, uh, the light returned, but it was just shouting, I can be very loud, believe me. And so it worked. And uh, then kept going and coming and going and doing more things. And now, look, that's where I am now, and that's where I'm going in a few hours with Jano, and the president of AIN is going to come facilitate the workshop of my team, 30 people, Vanuatu, uh, Uganda, uh, Togo, Bangladesh, all of us are going to spend four days talking stuff. The facilitator of the event will be Paul Z, not because I want, but because my peers saw how successful my improv games are. So, if you want to help us, there's going to be a session afterwards. We want you to help us identify more games where we can energize it's about adapting what you already know to the disaster preparedness. Before the disaster, after the forecast. How can we take action? How can we give the jolt? Uh, that's the room. And uh, so, back here. You have a comfort zone. It's a, we have, we, uh, yes and, yes and, let's go to the basement. Yes and, let's have a great fun. Can you please rethink how you can be of service to that one that is not in front of you? It's somewhere in Burkina Faso. Some were in Fiji, some were in, in Bolivia. We need your help. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>